have Brother Harry preaching tonight. Amen. Looking forward to what God's put on his heart. So uh, you encourage him, you pray for him, and uh, you just ask God to do a work now. Amen. chapter number 18 tonight. Matthew chapter number 18. I'll try my best to be brief tonight. Kind of got just a thought here the Lord's had on my heart and uh, some things that I've kind of dealt with in my own life and I guess it's, uh, a lot of times things that you face or go through yourself, a lot of times it's easier to preach about them just because you know what it's like to be there. I'm going to try to give you something that will help you. Uh, Y'all pray for us this weekend. Me and Lori's going away for our anniversary. Uh, celebrating 20 years. This year. <laughs> 20, I can't believe it. Sometimes I don't even feel 20. <laughs> I don't feel very 20. Then other days I feel 100. <laughs> Y'all pray for us this weekend. We're going to get away for a couple of days and have a good time together. My wife is my best friend. Ain't nobody I'd rather be with. Me. We have a blast together. We embarrass our daughter when she's with us, but we have a blast together. This weekend, I was thinking about time. And man, I tell you what, I was, uh, I was over at the gym today, and the guy that comes in there, his, his wife and his little girl come in there with him. It was visiting him, you know, bringing him something today. And she's a little bitty thing. I was telling him, she was sitting there, he was talking to her, and she was smiling and grinning at us and stuff. And I told him, I said, You better enjoy that because you blink your eyes twice, and she'll be a teenager. It's hard to believe mine's 16. Hard to believe I've been married 20 years. I mean, that's just mind boggling to me. It don't seem like it's been that long, but. Uh, time flies right on by. I was reading today, heard about this uh, elderly couple that was in their 80s and was having problems remembering things. And it just kept on being a problem and a problem. So they decided to both go to the doctor and get checked out. They go see the doctor and they tell the doctor, you know, doctor, we're having problems remembering stuff. So he said, well, I'll check you out and we'll see what's going on. So they done a bunch of tests on them and come back. All the tests was good. Told them, said, you know, y'all are healthy as a horse. There's no reason why you shouldn't be remembering things other than the fact it's just your age. He says, so i tell you what you need to do. You need to start writing things down. That way you won't forget things. So they went home and they sat there that night and the man got up and go to the kitchen to get him something to eat and his wife says, honey, how about get me a piece of cake while you're in there? He says, okay. And he started walking on and she said, now don't forget to get me a piece of cake while you're in there. He says, okay, I will. And he kept walking toward the kitchen. She said, now don't forget to get me a piece of cake. He said, I got it. It's a piece of cake. I, I won't forget that. I'm just going to the kitchen. She said, well, I tell you what, while you're in there, I think I'll have some strawberries on it too. He says, okay, I got that. He walked a little further. She said, while you're at it, I think I want some whipped cream on there too. He says, okay, I got it. He said, you want some? She said, now, now you sure you ain't going to forget it? He said, I ain't going to forget it. She said, maybe you ought to write it down. Remember what that doctor told us to do. He said, I got it under control. He said, you want some cake with strawberries on it and whipped cream? She said, yeah, that's what I want. So he went to the kitchen. He was gone a little while. He come back and handed her a plate with bacon and eggs on it. <laughs> she said, where's my toast? <laughs> I guess if you're going to struggle, that's a good way to clean it up. What have you done? What you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matthew chapter number 18. Matthew chapter number 18. I'm just going to read two verses here uh, tonight. Bring the message the Lord's laid upon our heart. Uh, Matthew chapter 18. Look at verse number 21. The Bible says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. And I want to take them two verses tonight. I'm going to preach to you uh, just a few moments. As I said, the Lord's really had this on my heart for a while. And I guess in my own life, it's something that I deal with. I think everybody does sometime or another. Uh, but I'm going to talk to you tonight about forgiveness. Forgiveness. And I'm going to preach on the easiest thing to do is the hardest thing to do. The easiest thing to do is the hardest thing to do. And I believe uh, probably if we went around the, the room here tonight and talked to everyone that's had something happen in their life, you could probably say that that's true. Yeah. It's something that's so easy to do, it's something that we should do, 
But yet, there's been times in our life where I'm sure it's been the hardest thing in the world for us to do. And I want to talk to you a little bit about forgiveness. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house tonight. God, I pray you touch us now. Lord, help us just uh, uh, help the people of God tonight with your word. Lord, this is something that you've laid upon our hearts. And God, I know that uh, even my, in my own life, there's times that I've struggled with things. And uh, it's hard to forgive sometimes. But Lord, we know that uh, it's what we're supposed to do. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us just to say a little something tonight that'd be a help and a blessing to someone. Lord, maybe there's someone here tonight that's struggling with this very thing. Lord, they just need some help from your word tonight. So God, I pray that you touch us and help us. Lord, we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. For in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. The easiest thing to do is the hardest thing to do. Um, of course, usually y'all know whenever I preach, I like to take something and go through a story in the Bible. It's, uh, sometimes it's even hard for me to study something like this because it's kind of not like... I don't like preaching stuff like this just because I like taking a story and having that story in my mind. And a lot of times when you go preaching things like this, it's more of a topical subject. Uh, but I want to try to uh, show you a few things here that I've uh, learned, things that I've seen while I've been studying this. And uh, As I said, talk to you about forgiveness tonight. And, you know, a lot of times in our life, the first reaction in our life uh, whenever something happens to us or somebody does us wrong is, uh, we want to give them back for what they've done. Yes, and it's real hard for us to forgive people. I mean, we might as well admit it. Every one of us probably is guilty of it. And Maybe you're in here tonight and you don't struggle with it at all. Well, you pray for some of us because some of us do struggle with it. Uh, and it's real easy for us in our flesh to get upset because somebody does something wrong toward us or says something wrong about us or whatever the case may be. And it's real easy for us to get upset and not do the right things. But uh, if we're going to be what we ought to be for God, we've got to learn forgiveness. Amen. And I've said this many times, and it's, it's, it's so very true, and it's easy preaching and hard living. But if you're going to do anything for God, you better learn to forgive. Amen. Because there's going to be somewhere or another down the road in your spiritual life where somebody's going to make you mad. Somebody's going to say something to you that hurts your feelings. Somebody's going to do something to you in your spiritual life, in the spiritual work that you're doing for the Lord. They're going to upset you. And if you don't learn to forgive and go on down the road for God, it's going to bother you. Amen. It's going to bother you. And I'll show you a few things here tonight, how that it can affect our lives. And you know what? There's probably a lot of things, and it's, it's not just spiritual things sometimes that we have a hard time with. There's a lot of people over the years that I've talked to that's had things happen with them in their family or Somebody does them wrong, and it's like they can never get by that. And, and if you talk to somebody that's maybe they had a parent or, or a spouse that uh, really done something terrible to them in their life, and uh, they try their very best to get by that and try to go on down the road and do the best that they can, and there's a lot of people that struggle with that throughout their whole life. <clears throat> and they'll tell you that that's a, a demon, so to speak, in their life, that this is always hanging over their head. Amen. Is always bothering them and it affects everything in their life. It's the same way in your spiritual life. You get to where somebody upsets you or does something wrong to you. Right. Uh, the right thing for us to do is forgive them, or forgive them and go on down the road. Do a work for God because we can't do anything about other people and what they do. We can't control their actions. We can't control their feelings. And uh, sometimes we just got to learn to forgive going down the road Amen. and do a work for God. Amen. And uh, forgiveness, uh, I'll give you the definition of forgiveness. It's the act of forgiving the pardon of an offender by which, and, and look at this, by which he is considered and treated as not guilty. Yeah. And how hard is that for us to do? Right. And I don't care how spiritual you are or how high on your spiritual horse you think you are. Uh, somebody does you wrong, your flesh don't want to do the right thing. And you want to retaliate. You say, oh, that's not me. I would never do that. Well, I guarantee you, if somebody in this church right now, you love as a family and you love them dearly, if they've done something to your spouse or your child or done something that upset them, that old cat in you is going to come out. And the claws is going to start sticking out of your hands and you're going to get upset. And it's going to be real easy for you to retaliate. And I'll just be honest with you. Somebody take me off bad enough, I'm probably going to smack them in the mouth. Can you just pray for them? I'm sorry. I, it's something I have to deal with. 
no, this is how it is. Somebody jump up in my face and start flapping their gums, it's going to be a bad day for somebody. <laughs> somebody's toting a butt kicking, either me or them, but somebody's going to. Because that's my flesh. That's what I want to do in my flesh. That's not the right thing to do. That's not what I'm supposed to do. That's something that we have to deal with. And everybody's different. There's people in here that have the temperament that if nothing bothers them, nothing gets to them. I've got a very uh, 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 low temperament, I guess you'd say, or, or it takes a lot to bother me, but once somebody really makes me mad, look out. It's bad news. I was in there in the gym the other day, and I can't stand, I'm a real neat person. I don't know if y'all ever noticed that, but I'm glad. I like things clean, I like things in place. Just how I am. Might be an OCD, I don't know. They call it something nowadays. Uh, but when I'm over at the gym, it's the same way. I like things in place. I cannot stand, by the way, if you go to a gym, I'm going to tell you a pet peeve that I don't like. Don't do it. When you go in there and you pick up a plate off of a 45-pound rack, and you take it back and you put it on the rack with a 25-pound plate goes, that makes me mad. <laughs> if you took it off the 45, put it back on the blessed 45. You know? If they make a mess in there all the time, it's like a bunch of kids you clean up after. It's worse than kids. I tell some of them, I'd hate to see your house the way you treat things around here. But I went in there the other day, and man, they had just, I'd, I'd done a bunch of rearranging there. They had messed with stuff in there over the weekend, messed stuff up, and I was just boiling hot. I was in there just to rent them. If they'd have been in there then, it would have been a bad day for them. I was renting raving. By the time the day got dragged on and they came in, you know, I calmed down, so it was a good thing. But you know what? Sometimes in our life, people, and I got to thinking about this, I was glad that they wasn't there that morning because I might have said something I shouldn't have said to them. I was thinking after I seen them, you know, they come up to me and apologize for doing it or whatever, you know. And, and I was thinking, you know, it was probably a good thing. The Lord knew that I didn't mean to see them at that time because my temper would have got the best of me. And instead of being what I ought to be in and, and what I should have been, I'd have said the wrong things. And I'd have done the wrong things. And you know what? Sometimes we can have that happen in our lives and somebody pop off at us or do something to us. And we can't get by that. We can't forgive them for what they've done. And we're going down the road in our life and it's something that eats at us all the time. And there's people that are sitting right in here tonight and you've been done wrong in your life. Whether it be in your spiritual life or your family, whatever it is, you've been done wrong in your life and it may be something that eats at you so much that you can't get by it. And there's been times in my life, you know what? The devil knows you can't get by it. Amen. And you know what he does? He's always putting it in front of you. Amen. There's things that has happened in my life that I know that I was right in and that person was wrong in. They're the ones that made the mistake. They're the ones that done me wrong. And I know that, but yet uh, uh, I'm not supposed to have wrong feelings toward them. I'm supposed to let it go and go on. And that is hard to swallow for me. I don't like it. I don't like it that way. I want to say, God, I don't understand why you allow this to happen. Why do you let them do the way they do? And it seems like their life's just hunky-dory. Everything's wonderful all the time for them. It's just uh, they've got money running out their ears. Life is great. They're just doing everything wonderful. And it seems like when you try to do the right thing, everything goes wrong in your life. And you know what? The devil knows that in our life and he sees it bothers us in our life and he's always put it in the front of us. And it's always there. And he just eats it. And I'm going to tell you what to do. It'll affect your life. It will affect your life. I'm going to share a few things here with you that I believe we can see that it affects us. When uh, uh, we have somebody do us wrong or do the wrong things, I just want to give you three quick things tonight. I promise it won't be long tonight. First of all, uh, if we're going to be the kind of person that we need to be for the Lord, we've got to forgive people. I want you to see the importance of forgiveness. The importance of forgiveness. You say, well, what's, the, what's so important about forgiving someone? Well, I'm going to tell you, there's three things that's important about forgiveness. First of all, it's important for our favor. So what are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about our touch of God. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, don't you listen to what I'm saying, and I know I'm right. There is no way you're ever going to have God in your life if you can't forgive somebody. Right. 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 It ain't going to happen. And I'm talking about from the pulpits to the views. I don't care who you are. It's going to affect your spiritual life. God, all through His Word, commands us to forgive people. And He never said, uh, forgive them once they've right their wrongs. That ain't what He told us to do. He told us to forgive them. And you know what? There may be people in your life that never writes the wrongs that they've done to you. But it still don't mean you're supposed to forgive them. That don't mean you've got to go be best friends with them and hang out with them and go play golf with them or anything like that. But you're supposed to forgive them. And boy, that is so hard for us to do in our flesh. It's, it's hard. I'm not going to tell you it ain't. It's hard. It's hard for me to do. It's hard for me to do that. I don't want to forgive them. I want to give them back. Say, so you mess with me. I'm going to mess with you now. That's what my flesh wants to do. That's not the right thing to do. 
And we're never going to have a touch of God on our life. God's never going to use us for nothing if we can't forgive people. Amen. If a man of God, a preacher or a pastor, went through his whole spiritual life and was mad at everything that had grown toward him, there's no way he could ever make it in ministry. Amen. You have to learn to forgive if you're going to do anything for God. Because people are going to do you wrong. You take our church right here, we run, what, three, 350 people? You put that many people in one place and everybody's not going to like you. You're not going to like everybody. Now, we're supposed to love each other as far as uh, what the Lord tells us, but that doesn't mean we got to like everybody. That doesn't mean everybody's personalities is hunky-dory with one another. And, uh, you love hanging out, but we're supposed to love one another. Amen. And when somebody does you wrong, the best thing for you to do is forgive them and go on down the road. Because if you let that first little foot of, of, of hatred and, and junk get in your life, and you sit around and you mull over that, and you think about that. I've said this so many times. Our biggest enemy is our mind. We sit around and we blow things way out of proportion to what they are. There's been times in my life where somebody done me wrong or said something about me or whatever it might have been. And I'll go through my day and all day long I've got that on my mind and I've blown it up way bigger in my mind than what it actually is. And I'm thinking this is what they think and this is how they do. By the end of the day I'm ready to stick my fist in the back of their head and I ain't even talking to them that day. Because that's what the devil wants us to do. He makes things way bigger than they are. He blows things way, way up in our life and makes us think all these kind of thoughts. He uses our mind against us to get us in. Because he knows if he can get them thoughts in our mind, them things Amen. in our mind, then we're not going to do anything for God. Amen. We're not going to do anything for God. So we've got to make sure that we do the right things in our life. The importance of forgiveness. If we're going to have God's favor, God's touch in our life, we've got to forgive. We've got to forgive. Not only we see the favor, if we're going to have God's favor, the importance of forgiveness, but if we're going to have uh, freedom in our life, it's important for us to forgive. You say, what are you talking about with freedom? Uh, forgiveness doesn't make the other person right. Right. It makes you free. Amen. That is so. You know what? Our physical, fleshly mind don't like that. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. us saying, even though Amen. you're wrong, and I know you're wrong, I want to forgive you anyway. Amen. That doesn't mean that they're right, but you know what it does in our mind? We get to think, well, if I forgive them, then I'm just giving them the okay that they know the right thing about me. That ain't what it does. It frees you up. Yeah, right. It frees you up. See, if you forgive them and let it go, then they can deal with whatever. They can stand before God someday Amen. with the wrong that they've done towards you. Yeah. But it's out of your life. Amen. It's out of your mind. You ain't got to deal with it anymore. Amen. That's what forgiveness is. It gives us freedom. Forgiveness is hard sometimes, but it's the only road to freedom. The other road is always leads to destruction. Amen. That is so true in our life. I promise you, if you get to where you're so consumed with something somebody's done to you, something, some wrong that somebody's done to you, something somebody said about you, it's going to lead to destruction in your life. Amen. I have seen Amen. people that it's destroyed their family. It affects their family relationship. It affects the relationship with their spouse, with their children, because they're so consumed with because somebody done something wrong. Amen. Because it will lead to bad things in their life. Amen. It runs into everything in their life. Everybody says, oh, that ain't going to happen to me. You may be the very one happens to you. Amen. If you want that freedom in your life, you're going to have to learn to forgive people. Amen. Forgive people. You say, well, I, I've been, you don't understand what they've done to me. It doesn't matter. God tells us that we've got to forgive. Amen. We've got to forgive. That's a hard thing to swallow, but we've got to forgive. The importance of forgiveness is important to our favor and God's touch. It's important to our freedom, us going down the road and doing something for God. Not only that, it's important to our future. Amen. If you're going to have any kind of future in your life as far as doing a work for God, you've got to forgive. Amen. It's important that we forgive. Amen. We forgive and let go. We forgive and let go. The importance of forgiveness. The importance of forgiveness. Not only see the importance of forgiveness, but don't you see the impossibility of forgiveness. So what are you talking about, the impossibility? There's two things I wrote down here. Out of these verses of Scripture of the Bible that we read here uh, tonight, verse 22, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee unto seven times, but unto seventy times seven. The impossibility of forgiveness. First of all, forgiveness is impossible with our pride. Amen. It's impossible with our pride. Because our pride don't want us to forgive That's nobody. Right. Right? We want that idea of, uh-uh, buddy. Yes. You done me wrong. You think I'm going to forgive. I have heard people say, I ain't forgiving him for that. I don't care what he does. Right. 
I know people that's apologized for some wrong that they've done and the person won't accept their apology. I ain't forgiving you for that. And you know what? If you live like that in your life, you're done. You're as far as you're going to God. And if you allow your pride, your stinking pride to keep you from getting forgiveness from somebody, I don't care what they've done to you. Peter, he, he almost was boastful here in a way. He went to God and says, God, if, if my brother offend me, what... Peter was probably thinking, oh, I said, God, what do I do? Forgive him seven times? And God says, no, you do it 70 times seven. 490 times I want you to forgive him. You think about that in your, your, your mind. If you got to the point where somebody wronged you and you had to forgive them 490 times that they wronged you, by then you probably don't forget about what they've done anyway. <laughs> and it wouldn't even matter no more. What God's saying is, is I don't care how many times they do something wrong to you. I don't care what they do in your life. I don't care how they talk about you. I don't care what they do. You forgive them for it. And that's the attitude that we've got to have. And like I say, that is easy preaching and hard living. That's not easy to do. Because that's not what our flesh wants to do. But it don't matter what people say about us or what people do to us. We're supposed to forgive them if we're Christians. If we're the Christian that we ought to be, we're supposed to forgive them. We're supposed to forgive them. And I know people down through the years that have done some hurtful things to people. And I've seen them forgive them. And I, sometimes I think, man, I just don't know how, I don't know if I can do that. I was reading a story today. I was, I was just studying about forgiveness and not even with biblical things, just looking at things. And I read a story on a, it was some kind of newspaper article I found on the internet. It was talking about. They had done a story back when the, the bombings happened in New York, the Trade Center and all that. They had done a story, it was a couple of several years after that, to some of the family members. And talked about uh, how if they could forgive the people that done that. And it gave a percentage there, I don't remember what the percentage was, of the people that they done, how many of them could forgive them guys for what they done. And there was actually some of them that did. And I was thinking to myself, you know, that's real hard. We think in our mind, and, and you know, I'm all American about it. I'm ready to go over and make a sandbox out of the whole place. Trust me, if I'd been president, it'd have been bad news. But for us to do the Christian thing of what God wants us to do, we're supposed to forgive them. And that's hard to swallow, buddy. They come over here on our land, on our soil, and do something like that. The first thing we want to do is start shooting missiles. I mean, you know, and that, and to some degree, I guess that's what we ought to be, but it's our, we're supposed to forgive them for what they've done. It was, it was going on in the article talking about someone that had murdered somebody, and they'd done a percentage of, of how many people, if that was some of their family, could forgive them. And it was talking about how some people on there had had family members that were murdered, and how they had forgiven that person, even went to the point of going to them and, and telling them, look, I don't like what you've done. I don't like what happened. I don't like the fact that you took my family member from me, but I forgive you for it. And that's real hard for us to do. Somebody do something to my wife or my child, uh, they're going to meet Jesus. If I'm, in my, if I'm in jail the rest of my life, then that just be how it be. They, they forget the law. Jesus is going to be seeing them soon. And it'd be real hard for me to forgive somebody that's done that, but it's what we're supposed to do. And if we can look at it that way, Think about the little trivial, stupid things that we get mad over in Baptist churches. And sit around. I know people that have been mad at people in their church for years over something that's done. Probably don't even remember what they're mad over. <laughs> mad. Sit around, blowed up as a bullfrog. Sit around, staring down at the other side of the church and wonder why God ain't moving. Amen. Wonder why people ain't getting saved. Right. God can't move in that mess. As Christians, we can't have that kind of spirit in us. We can't have that kind of attitude toward people. We've got to learn to forgive. Amen. The impossibility of forgiveness, it's impossible to forgive with our pride. It's impossible with prerequisites. What I mean by that, you can't forgive somebody and say, well, I will forgive you if you do this, this, and this, and this. No, that ain't what God tells us to do. God didn't tell us to forgive them if, if we... If they met some of the needs that we want them to meet, God just told us to forgive them. Amen. We don't suppose to forgive people out of things that's going to benefit us and sit around and say, well, if you do this, this, and this, I'll forgive you. That's not the way God told us to do it. We've got to learn to, to forgive no matter what. The importance of forgiving. The impossibility of forgiveness. Then I want you to see the inspiration of forgiveness. This was the, the main thing I wanted to get to tonight. The inspiration of forgiveness. You say, well, preacher, how can I, what can I look at to learn forgiveness? There are so many things in the Bible, places that you can see where God taught us forgiveness. Probably one of the best uh, uh, illustrations that I could 
think of in the Word of God that I look at and love to see is the story of Joseph. You know the story of Joseph, what happened to him, how his brothers took him and sold him there and they put him in the pit, all the things that happened to him there. Look at all the wrongdoings that was done unto Joseph. Amen. But yet we know when you read the story that Joseph forgives him. Amen. He forgives him. He forgave them for everything that they've done. Amen. Man, what a wonderful picture of how we need yes. to be as Christians. I wrote down three things that Joseph done that I believe we ought to apply to our own life. Uh, looking at the inspiration of forgiveness, first of all, he forgave them without blame. Amen. You don't see anywhere in the Word of God when you read about Joseph and what happened to him, there's nowhere in there where it talks about where he was sitting around pointing fingers and blaming them for what they did. Nowhere in there does he do that. Man, what a wonderful example of what we ought to be. Boy, that's, we don't want to do that. Do we? we don't sit around and say, I can't believe you've done that to me. I can't believe you would say that. I can't believe. I'm going to tell you one thing. Over my years of being in the ministry and being around church, Baptist people are some of the meanest, blessed people I've seen in my life. It's true. I swear to you, it seems like you go out in the world and people ain't nowhere near as mean as they are as a bunch of people that's supposed to be Christians. Man, they get blown hot about something in a hot minute. Fly off and half cuss you out. You're supposed to be Christians. That's not the way it ought to be in our life. We can't sit around and blame, 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 blame in our life. We can't sit around and blame somebody else just because our attitude is bad. You know what will happen in your life if you don't forgive someone? You'll sit around and you'll try to justify the fact that your attitude stinks. And you'll try to justify the fact that you're totally out of the will of God because you ain't close to Him. You ain't where you need to be because you haven't forgiven that person. And you'll sit around and you'll say, well, the reason I'm the way I am is because of what they've done. Well, you know what? That ain't going to hold up someday when you stand before God. We can use that as an excuse down here. We can say, well, God, I would have done this, but so-and-so done this to me. It doesn't matter. God ain't going to give a rip when you stand before Him someday. He ain't going to take that excuse. He ain't going to say, well, that's okay. Then I'll let it slide this time. That's not the way it's going to be. We can't sit around and blame others. Right. I don't care what they've done to us. It's our responsibility to forgive and go down the road. Amen. Joseph never pointed any blame. He never blamed anybody for anything when you read his life. He forgave without blame. Not only was there forgiveness without blame, but there was forgiveness without backlash. You say, what are you talking about? He didn't retaliate. Amen. And boy, that is the hardest thing. Like I said when I started, that is the hardest thing for us to do. Amen. We want to retaliate. I guarantee you. Yes, sir. You can go around this room tonight, and if you've ever had somebody do you wrong, and you're, you might not admit it, but you're thinking, buddy, I wish I could see them get there. Right. And there may be some of us that you see something happen to somebody in the back of your mind, and you're laughing because it won't happen. Right. say, oh, that ain't going to happen to me. It can happen to any of us. There's been times in my life I'm thinking, I'd like to see them mess up one time. I'm sick of being the one that seems like I always has the problems and the things go wrong. I'd like to see them fall on their hind end for one time. We've all been there. Yes, you might not want to admit it, but you've done it. Right, there have been times you've looked and you've said, I wish they had been so. I wish they did. And what a stinking attitude that is, President. There is preachers that I know that have done things wrong, and it's been shown that they've done things wrong. It's been proven that they've done things wrong. And they just sweep it under the rug and keep on going down the road, and it seems like the heavens just open up for them and everything is hunky dory. And sometimes I don't understand that. And I want to say, God, I don't understand. From what I've read in, in, in Your Word and from what I know, why does it seem like they get by with everything? And you know what? My wife, the, the, the little preacher that she is, always reminds me, you've got to remember that one day, I'm about to shut up. <laughs> I don't remember about one day. I want it to happen now. Because that's our mentality. We don't care about what God's going to do today. We want to get ourselves satisfied. We want to be pleased with seeing them hurt because they've done wrong. That is a terrible attitude. Right? You know what we should do when we see somebody fall, a brother or sister in Christ? We ought to be feeling sorry for them. We ought to be uh, hurtful because they messed up, because they've done wrong. And be praying for them instead of bashing on them. We see them get blessed just because maybe they've done something wrong to us. We've got to learn to forgive without backlash. I wrote down a little story here I thought was good. And this is, this is what most good old independent Baptists want to do. There were two brothers playing one night after dinner. While playing, little Jimmy hit little Johnny with a toy. Tears were shed and bitter words were exchanged. They went on and on until bedtime. Mom told Johnny he needed to forgive Jimmy. 
She said, what if one of you were to die tonight while you were asleep and you haven't forgiven the other? So Johnny said, fine, I will forgive him tonight. But when morning comes, if we're both still alive, he better look out. <laughs> That's exactly the good old independent Baptist way. Say, well, I'll forgive you for right now, but I'm going to tell you one thing. If we want to give people back, we've got to learn to forgive without backlash. Learn to forgive without retaliation. So, man, I forgive you for what you've done. It wasn't right. You've done the wrong thing, but I forgive you. Let's go on down the road for God. Not try to retaliate. You've got to be forgiveness without blame. Forgiveness without backlash. And then not only that, there's got to be uh, forgiveness without bitterness. Joseph gave forgiveness without bitterness. You know what will happen in your life? If you get to the point where you stop forgiving people for things that went wrong in your life, you're going to get so bitter. So bitter. And it affects every area of your life. If you get bitter on God or you get bitter on somebody, it affects everything in your life. And you know what? I have seen people that has gotten bitter against the Lord or bitter against a pastor or something of that nature or somebody in the church that maybe done them wrong and they ended up getting completely away from God. And I know people that's out of church today because somebody done them wrong. And you know what? That is, it's, it's terrible that we're that. Well, I know it's, we're flesh and it's hard for us to get by things sometimes. But like I said, one of these days when we stand before God, God ain't going, that, that, that just ain't going to fly. Amen. I know a man right now that got saved under Daddy's ministry. About years ago, I was a little boy. He was a great man. God called him to preach. He was a good man. He had something wrong done for him. And as far as I know today, he's still not going to church. God called preacher. He got away from everything because somebody done him wrong. Amen. You say, oh, that can't happen. I can't believe that would happen. It can happen to every one of us. Yes. I'm going to tell you one thing. These people that's got the idea that they can't never, nothing ever go wrong in their life and then nothing ever get them away from God and never get them away from the house of God. You better not be so boastful to say that. I'm going to tell you that right now because the devil's listening to you. Right? He'll say, okay, buddy, if you think nothing can get you away, let me just see if I can keep you there. Right? Amen. And He'll do everything He can to get us to, to turn our backs on God and go away from God. And it can happen to the very best of us. There's been a lot of people that's fell by the wayside because of it. I think about one of the greatest preachers that I've ever known was Brother Buster Seaton. I love to hear that man preach. But yet he got so uh, uh, eat up with, with mental things and things going on in his mind that he took his own life. You say, oh, that was a preacher. He couldn't have done that. Yeah, he did it. One of the greatest preachers that ever walked the planet as far as I'm concerned. I'd love to hear that man preach. But yeah, he was so terrible. And the devil got in his head and convinced him that he was doing no good, that he wasn't doing anything for God. You say, oh, it can't happen to me. You get bitterness in your life from like forgiveness and things in your life just because somebody done something wrong to you or said something about you, and it can happen to you. Amen. And you know what? People are just looking for something to go spread rumors about, spread gossip about. And if you sit around and you take all that stuff in and you say, oh, uh, I can't believe he'd say that about me. And then next thing you know, the devil says, well, I can't believe they'd say that about you. I wouldn't take that advice you. I'd go over and I'd say something to him about it. And then you go over and you say something. Then it blows into something else. And you get into it with them and, and it just keeps on mounting up and the devil just sitting there. It's just like in commercial, that little old devil sitting up on his shoulder and he's just whispering in your ear all the time. Just to get you fired up and get you going. The next thing you know, you're not at Calvary Baptist Church anymore. You're out of the will of God. You're away from God. You're not doing anything for God. And all the cause of unforgiveness. There's been a lot of people that could have done great things for God, but unforgiveness ruined their life. Ruined their life. And it can happen to every one of us sitting here tonight. Unforgiveness. And I'm telling you that because I have dealt with it myself. This is something that I've had to work in in my own life. Things that I know that I was done wrong by. Things I know that shouldn't have been done the way they was done. But what am I going to do? Am I just going to quit on God? You've got, to keep, you've got to learn to forgive and go on. And that's hard for me to do. And you know, there's some days I'm better at it than others. Some days I, I get by and then there's other days every once in a while the old devil will slip up my ear and he'll say, he'll do a little something to remind you of what they've done to you. And then you start looking at it again, and there goes that mind running again. Next thing you know, you get to thinking about it, and you're and it's sitting around everything that's before you. It seems like it's always popping in your mind, Amen. popping in your mind. And if you don't watch it, it'll ruin you. Amen. It'll get you down spiritually. It'll get you where you don't care nothing about the things of God. You say, oh, that can't happen to me. It can happen to everyone. Amen. It can happen to everyone, and it all stems from unforgiveness. 
unforgiveness. And I wonder how many people are sitting right here in this church tonight. There may be somebody here that you're dealing with that very problem. There's somebody done something wrong to you, whether it's been a family member or whatever it was, and you can't get by it. It's always before you. It's always eating at you. The only way you're ever going to get victory of it is forgive that person. And I'm not talking, you don't even have to go to them. I'm talking about dealing with it in your own mind. Amen. Saying, God, I'm done with it. You do with what they, what you need to do with them. I'm forgiving them of it and I'm going on. Because I don't want my life to be ruined. Yeah. And if we don't watch it, forgive. The easiest thing to do in our life is the hardest thing to do. Amen. And that's forgive somebody. Right. Right. Forgive somebody. Because that's not what our flesh wants to do. Yes. We want to do the wrong things. We want to uh, get them back for the things that they've done. Unforgiveness is like a cancer. Yes, right. It just eats at you a little Amen. bit at a time. A little Amen. bit at a time. Keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. Next thing you know, you're completely out of the will of God, away from God, Amen. not doing anything that you're supposed to, and it all stems from unforgiveness. Right. 